All right, let's talk about this Aquarius full moon that's happening on August 19th. The sun in Leo, the moon in Aquarius. It is a lunar solar opposition, which means everything that has to do with personal security, emotional response, family matters, things of that nature are all in conflict or opposition or a pull and tug of war, basically, with all of the solar energy, which has to do with childhood, recreation, purpose. That's a big one. Vitality. So this is about a reassessment of certain things that happened at the beginning of this cycle. Remember, a full moon is a it's a midway point. It's you're halfway there, right? So we have a 28 day cycle. It started on August 4th with the new moon in Leo. So let's jump over to that because that's important. So when we take a look at what was going on with this new moon, we see that it was at 12 degrees in the sign of Leo in the Jupiter Decan. Now that's extremely important. So when you're looking at the entire picture, which we're about to do, we'll see how it's all connected together to see how it impacts you. Remember that it happening in Leo means it's happening in your Leo house. For all of our Leo risings out there like myself, this is happening in your first house. This is all about you know, motivation and with Leo and Leo being ruled by the sun and the sun being part obviously of the new moon, it's cycling back into itself. So it's bringing all of that energy back into the themes of wherever it sits in your chart. Now, specifically speaking for this one, there are no real challenges on this new moon, which can be great because it can be like this floodgate of moving forward and immersing yourself and finding purpose, which a lot of people are trying to figure out right now. Like, what am I trying to do? Who am I trying to be? And how am I supposed to do that? And because Vesta is involved in this new moon here that started on August 4th, it's all about what can we start and create? How can we start this new cycle and integrate my sense of emotional security? And with Vesta, it's that nun-like devotion. It's that desire to, to do and not really care what the consequences are. It's I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to push it I'm going to push it forward, push it through. Now, remember, these are not natal energies. These are transit energies, which means it's not your personal desires. It is the desires of the universe being pressured upon you to take action and to utilize this energy and bring it into your world. The beauty of transits is exactly that, that you were not born with this exact configuration at any given time of day. You're blending the energy that's being provided to you in its configuration at every single moment. Now, this is part of alignment. It's part of manifestation, but that's another video. When we look at the rest of this chart between, remember the, the, the moon has a orb of influence of three degrees either direction, so six total degrees, and the sun has a much larger one. So I'm only going to focus in on the three degrees for the moon, but in a new moon, full moon situation, and actually every other variation of it, it's going to be larger, which is why we feel these energies sooner than the actual full moon, new moon energy, because the orb of influence of the sun is so great that it's encapsulating or enveloping all of these other energies and forging all of these relationships. And uh, that, you know, the, the pathway uh, of the sun doing this is you know, a degree per day on average. So when we look forward, we see uh, the South Node and the North Node at nine degrees. We see, uh, I'm not going to talk about Ceres, it's actually out of orb for the moon. I'm Again, I'm sticking it with the moon here. And then we have this very loose conjunction that's still happening between uh, or, or at that point was coming up, but it was a loose conjunction between Mars and Jupiter over in Gemini. Now, when you take a look at all of these energies, the only one that is leading out of all of these energies is the South Node. And this is extremely important in alchemistic astrology. I haven't really talked about this before, but this is how I do my readings. This is how I see the flow of energy. I'll be talking about this in my book. I'll be teaching this in my classes. And for our Mystic Circle Alchemist level members, you guys are gonna have access to these kinds of tips and tricks and like really getting into the nitty gritty of how to read these charts, whether it's natal, electional, transit, whatever, accurately and very, very specifically because we wanna be precise. That's the whole point of alchemistic astrology is that it's reliable, it's accurate, it's usable, we alchemize the energy. So what I'm saying here is that the order of planets matter. They always matter. And there's not a lot of people who do that, and that's why the system uh, is, is revolutionary, right? So when we're looking at these, we see with this new moon that's happening here, moving forward to the sextile or the conjoining of energies, the inclusion of energies, which is a sextile's 
properties, we are actually supposed to be reaching into things that are from the past. Relationships, old flames, designs, legal matters, uh, a sense of inner peace, things that we felt comfortable with, our sense of outward value and how we present ourselves outwardly, whether that is through our talents or through uh, just the way that we kind of put ourselves out with fashion, with beauty, things of that nature. But we're going back. Now, we have a bunch of retrogrades all happening at the same time right now. And we have a bunch of planets in pre-grade right now. So certain planets that are still moving forward or slowing down. And th again, we're talking about August 4th. So this has already happened. And then we have some that are going retrograde. For instance, right now, as I film this and during this full moon, Mercury is in, re is in, <laughs> is in retrograde. However... When the new moon started, it was not yet. It was in pre-grade. So we have a couple of things here happening. Nemesis being conjunct Mercury is probably the biggest challenge during this time, but we'll address that in a second. So this is the only one moving forward. And that's, you know, I already explained that. And Lilith is really, both Liliths here, the inward and outward expression of it, are both saying, hey, we need to focus on this and say, what do we really want? But not to the point where where we are doing what we want at the sake of, uh, of others or the expense of others, and not for the sake of getting volatile or emotional or erratic within our sense of peace or emotion uh, or relationships with other people. So we're bringing these things from the past. So be careful, obviously of people coming back to you, uh, things coming back to you that were actually not so good for you, but there's something that you crave about it and see if you can implement that in a positive way to move forward or find what you liked about that in somebody else, in something else. Aside from that, everything else is leading into the new moon. You have your north node with Chiron retrograde up in Aries that is trying down to the new moon. You have its ruler, which is in this conjunction, this Mars, Jupiter, uh, situation over here that is sextile again. So it's all about when you're taking action, when you're coming up with these ideas, expansive, teaching, coaching, consulting, anything that has to do with politics or culture or foreign things or things of distance or just expansion in general. You have at that point, Mars was in the Gemini Deccan, Jupiter was in the Venus Deccan or the Libra Deccan. And that energy there is supposed to bring in a new cycle. It's supposed to bring in something you can get behind, devote, show your sense of purpose, vitality, creative expression, and pull that back into what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking. The North Node leading into it is all about what are you going to do for you? And again, this is all the new moon. This has already happened. Now we're halfway through. I'm not going to go any further into this. We're halfway through. Uh, actually, I will say one more thing because Ju uh, Jupiter, yeah, Venus is sitting here at 29 degrees in the fusion cusp area, meaning it is very much a Leo placement, but it is pulling Virgo's energy in and Virgo's ruler is Mercury with Nemesis. So how are you, how are you your worst enemy, your own worst enemy? What are you doing this fighting yourself? And when it comes to this creative expression, when it comes to value and relationships, remember Venus is also the ruler of Libra over here in the South Node. How are you pulling all of that together to find unification in purpose moving forward? How can you be more creative? How can you be more yourself? Because there's a lot of that going on where we don't really we're looking at social media too much. We're looking at everybody else so much and we're not taking ownership over ourselves and we're projecting insecurity out on the world. It's not helping anybody. It's not helping you. And it's definitely not helping other people who have to deal with it. So we want to vibe higher, which means we want to find a way to use this creative, expressive, taurus -in Libra, valuable, how do we relate to other people? How do we have self-worth for ourselves? How do we expand that out so that we can commit to something, devote to something, enjoy love, enjoy romance, enjoy being with our children and combine that into the real world? How do we, uh, with all that Jupiter energy included, how do we teach this? How do we express our opinions in a way that actually has a real world practical result? How do we find a, a way to include a sense of purpose and personal creative expression into our job? And with nemesis there, if you've been working over and over and over on something, let's say it's yours, right? Um, and you're not getting any results. You have to admit that something about your process is not right. And with Mercury now in retrograde, you should, have be, you should be going back and reanalyzing, reordering, restructuring, rethinking how you can make things a bit more efficient and practical. But in terms of like, let's say you don't work for yourself and this is not a personal project or a personal relationship or anything like that. Let's say you work for somebody else. Same thing. 
Are you working this job for the wrong reasons? Are you putting in extra time when you really shouldn't be? Are you not in a position where you feel like you're valued, you're appreciated, and you're able to be as creative as you want? And creativity is in everybody's chart. You might not feel you're creative, but that's because we tend to put a label on creativity and say, this is it, art, music, fashion. And sometimes it's like woodwork or organizing a very specific way. Like there's different ways to be creative. Now let's hop over to the full moon that's happening. You see the moon up here in Aquarius. Psyche is in retrograde. Pluto's in retrograde in the same sign. You have a, a semi-sextile that's happening here. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Let's talk about the opposition first. You have that Mercury retrograde conjunct the sun in Leo. You have Vesta conjunct this. Again, we are at the midpoint of a, a, a lunar cycle, which is including an opposition to the sun. So everything that we want to find balance in is being pulled away from this tug of war, this feeling that we feel more emotionally secure. Some people feel more emotionally secure breaking up with something, leaving something, ending a relationship, stopping what they're doing, cutting it off, making changes that may not be necessary because we're talking about Uranian energy here. And because we're talking about Uranus energy, then we're talking about its position over here in Taurus. It is not retrograde yet, but it is pre-grade. Now, it's not forming any semi-sextiles here, so we're not going to talk too much about that. However, it's ruler. Venus is over here in Virgo. So a lot that has to do with why are we making these changes? Well, it's leading through value and criticism. It's leading through um, potentially money and work. And it has to do with practicality and effort and feeling do feeling like, is this working? Or more importantly, do I know why I'm even doing this anymore? Because that's what Aquarian energy is all about anyway. It's the why, it's the how to, it's the mechanics. And with Pluto in the same sign causing a semi-sextile to it, we are having an internal conflict with our emotional resolution with why we're doing something, things from the past, resolving things, cycles, realizing I don't, I feel like I need to make these changes, but I don't necessarily know what they are. And I'm going back and things from the past are popping up just randomly and irrationally sometimes it feels or erratically. And the things that are popping up are not making me feel emotionally secure. I do not want this. I thought this was over. Uh, and that's the type of energy that's there. Now, the semi-sextile that's happening to, or semi-sextile, I keep saying the wrong thing today. That's that Mercury retrograde, by the way, just woo, uh, in Vir in, uh, well, it's not in Virgo now, it's in, <laughs> it's in Leo. So I feel like it's, well, it's Mercury, so it is Virgo's energy. It's the details. Uh, but I'm just going to roll right through this. So just forgive my slip ups here. It is a quincunx happening back down to Leo's energy with uh, Mercury. Remember when we talked about Leo, Leo is ruled by the sun. It's in its own sign. It's with Vesta. So we are not finding purpose and value and a reason to devote to something. And we have to do that during a full moon. We have to say what part of these changes actually can bring in something dramatic that's positive, something that is creatively expressing uh, or gives us the ability to creatively express ourselves through ideas, through communication. It makes us feel like we're able to say what we want to say, when we want to say it, how we want to say it. However, with that Mercury retrograde, we do have to rephrase things. We do have to realize that some pe sometimes we'll say things and people don't understand what we're saying. And the, all the power of the sun shining its, its light to the moon in opposition is going to make us feel emotionally unsettled unless we include it. And if it's too dramatic or if it's too much about ego or personality and and things are just getting lost in the sauce with the way that we say things and what we're trying to communicate and the fact that we have to redo the ideas, especially creative ideas, redraw something, rewrite something, rethink something that was you thought had a plan or a vision. And that vision is not going to bring you what you need with all these retrogrades. If it's here's a good example, if it's a business idea, I just had this conversation last night with my brother. If it's a business idea, you might think your business idea is wonderful. However, things might not work so well. So for instance, yesterday, my brother was like, I'm going to write all these things down. And then I'm going to script them. I'm going to film all the social media videos so that they're out of the way. And then I'm going to work on XYZ. And it didn't happen. And he got very frustrated and stressed out about it. He's like, I don't understand. In his words, my brain wasn't braining. And I was like, <laughs> the thing you have to realize, and this is part of the acceptance of spirituality and the universe and the whole reason why astrology and all of this stuff exists, including tarot and other divination tools, 
is because you don't have control over everything. And while I don't personally believe that the universe has our best interests in mind in terms of like personal interests, it definitely does say you're going to align or you're not going to align. And there's a flow of energy, a direction of energy. And when things are not supposed to move forward and you are forcing them to, it causes mess ups. Like for instance, in a Mercury retrograde, if you try to send a text or an email and it doesn't go through and you get really frustrated and keep trying to send it, it will eventually go through. But the universe was telling you something. Happens to me all the time. This is the Mercury retrograde is actually the one thing that really got me into like surrendering to the fact that I don't have control over everything. You look at that text, you look at that email and you realize I forgot to attach something. I spelled something wrong, which actually mattered. I'm sending it to the wrong person, whatever it is, there was some sort of error. Usually I've never seen it where it's just not working and it should. So Mercury retrogrades aren't bad. They're telling you, stop it. And in the case of my brother's situation, after I explained that to him, I, I went through him with his business plan and I said, well, here's the problem. And I listed out X, Y, Z. And I said, if you really want to move this forward and you want to be different and stand out, again, there's that lunar energy sitting in Aquarius that is forging this, uh, this full moon to happen, then you need to rethink your synergistic business plan and I do business consulting, I'm gonna be announcing that pretty soon, so that you don't, like, there's, well, the moon in Aquarius says a bit revolutionary, but so that you can actually use this energy and not feel like you have to fight your way into marketing and advertising and, and like, finding creative ways to stand out, like forcing that. There's a natural integration by saying, just change your business plan. You're not changing who you are or what you're doing, but you're presenting it in a different way so that there's a sense of personal creative expression that automatically separates you. And at first, he didn't want to hear that. He was like, no, this is what I do. Like how <laughs> his response was, how can you do fitness any different? And I said, well, look at me. How do you do astrology any different? I don't do astrology like astrologers. Do I do forecasts? Yes. If you are want to teach fitness and bodybuilding, can you teach stuff? Yes. Should that be the focus? No. Because it there is no differentiation for what I do with astrology. If I wasn't sitting here showing you the details of how things work and how to apply it in your life, alchemize the energies, I would just be another astrologer on YouTube saying, here's the energies, here's what it's going to do to you, good luck. But my purpose here is to help people alchemize, vibe higher, live better lives, create the community, so on and so forth. That's all in all my charts, my mystic circle chart, my mystic rebels chart, my personal charts, and then obviously the transit energies, my relocated chart, all of that. So that was what we discussed. And the funny thing is at the end, he goes, he had this light bulb moment, which happens with Aquarian energy. He's like, whoa, I could do... I could be like this. And then he's like, my old ideas sucked. <laughs> I was like, they didn't suck. They just needed to be reworked because you couldn't have gotten to where you are without the original idea. So we can't play that game. We have to just trust the process. Trust the process does include or require your intervention, your expression of free will within the available energy. So anyway, that was a little anecdotal story of what happened last night perfect here and today i know that he's going to be jumping on this re revisiting all of this um because he was super excited at the end like oh my god i go that's the way that it works so um there it is and the challenge uh you know we have that semi-sextile here but remember the moon is in the lead so when it comes to all that strategy energy that's coming from scorpio right that polis energy that creative problem solving here that's in retrograde and re-going remember i i know all these energies like i read it in real time but i know these energies give or take as they go because i follow along but that semi-sextile here means use the moon in its opposition here in aquarius to the leo energy to resolve what you're re-strategizing. So we talked about that, right? But there's another one because there's the moon coming to uh, Neptune, which is in retrograde in Pisces. And this forms what I call an arrowhead. And an arrowhead in alchemistic astrology is essentially a yod. So you have this coming down, Pluto coming down to Vesta, Mercury, and the sun as a stellium. And then you have it going back to Neptune. And in between, you have that opposition, which in this case is the moon. Now, I'm not going to discuss how to resolve a an arrowhead aspect pattern in a chart that I will be teaching that in my my courses in Mystic Circle. But each one of these aspect patterns 
has, again, a flow of energy, a way to resolve it, and it's not as simple as people try to make it. However, once you understand it, it becomes quite simple, right? Just like learning a language. Once you know how to speak it, it's like, oh, it's easy, right? So in this case, we have to understand oops, that, um, that Neptune is in the lead on this one, and it's retrograde, and Saturn's there, and Saturn's retrograde, and that's, you know, it's ru Saturn's ruler is Neptune here, and fortunately, it doesn't continue on, so th it's self-contained right here. Neptune's all about spirituality. It's all about go with the flow. It's all about inspiration. It's all about the creative in terms of the intangible creativity that comes from, like, God-given gifts. It has to do with music. has to do with just ebb and flow. And things that are behind the scenes, things that you wouldn't have normally thought of in the unconscious mind. And when it's in retrograde, you have to dive deeper. You have to allow yourself to immerse yourself. So it's kind of like in this case with the, all the creative expression and the changes you want to make, you kind of have to not focus on the details. Even though Mercury is in retrograde, first off, it's in Leo. If you really want to utilize this energy positively... You kind of have to sit there and daydream a bit and you have to let your mind wander, not your logical mind, but your just visionary mind in terms of it goes where it goes. I let it go. I'm not trying to control any of the thoughts and I just grab what comes in. It's kind of like a visionary stream in your mind. And this is something that if you don't know how to do this, it's a blockage. And um, that's where you would want to book with Ashley a spiritual awakening session and express that this is something you're having a difficulty with and she will guide that session for this because it'll activate your third eye. You'll be more in touch with your intuition and be able to expand out on this. But this is required because it can be very difficult for you to feel like that hope and that inspiration, you could feel very stuck. It could be very much a roadblock, a hurdle. And if you want to use this full moon energy positively to move forward, it's going to require something bigger than you. And that's where Neptune's energy comes in. And again, retrograde is it turns it inward. So it has to be within your mind. It has to, like, you really have to dive deep to kind of push that forward. So because Saturn has to do with restructuring, reassessing authority, and it's in Pisces, which is already like, I don't really need full long-term goals, but I do need some goals. And those goals need to be able to be malleable in a mutable sign like Pisces and go with the flow. And they have, I have to have some sort of, deadline that's not a deadline you know it goes immersive and we want to make sure that it's because it squares off with this jupiter um, mars conjunction over here in gemini that you're not you're not just daydreaming for the sake of doing it you're not just thinking oh how how, how idealistically perfect would it be if i did xyz because there's no there's no way to do those things right now, right? It squares off with this energy in Gemini, which means if we want to take action on expansion and actually do these things, Gemini's ruler is over here. It's Mercury. And Venus is in, in Virgo, and that ruler is Mercury. So when we're looking at an opposition, looking at a direct opposition, there is no handoff. And I'll explain what a handoff is in another video. But it just means that it's in direct um, direct alignment, which means one planet's not overtaking the other one. So it's not about which one comes first, which one comes second in a new moon or a full moon. It's about how do we balance these out and look at the positioning and the flow of the rest of the planets. So when we're, we're pushing everything forward, this energy here is not really impacting this energy over here. If it is, is very mild on a very wide orb, which I wouldn't include. So this is actually acting semi-independently, however, directly through rulership. So when you're looking at all of this energy, all of this Sat Saturnian energy here and restructuring things and everything is happening in Capricorn, which includes the Pluto stuff. It's retherapizing things. It's, and since Pluto's at zero fusion cusp area, it's pulling from Aquarian energy. So it's very much like, what's my future? Your goals are supposed to be a bit more about aspirations. It's supposed to be more about the ideas. So you don't want to get lost in la-la land. You want to start thinking about actually taking action on these ideas and expanding and realize that it does require some inspiration to feed into these ideas to take action. It also requires hope. It requires you to trust yourself and it requires you to let go of fear because Fear will stop you from taking action with this energy. I mean, it does it all the time anyway. But you have to say, I need something different. I want to do something different. And I want to assess the value in it for a practical, real world moving forward where I feel vitality again, meaning I feel alive again. I feel like 
I matter, the things I say matter, the things I think matter, I could put my weight behind all of those and create something for myself. And some of that is going to be romantic. Some of that is going to be creative in business. Some of that is just going to be just enjoying life, playing with your kids, going back and actually like maybe turn on the video games and do something that inspires you, hand-eye coordination and something that helps you grow and uh, stimulates your mind so that you can then break through and break free from something because all of this is saying we are not allowing ourselves to do what we normally would do, especially as a child. We feel like we have to concentrate on the future or be afraid of the future and we don't live in the present, in the moment. And that's what this full moon is saying. So um, I'm not going to go through all the 12 signs here. You want to look to see where, well, I'll, I'll highlight them real quick, right? So, you know, the sun being in Leo, moon being in uh, Aquarius. If you are uh, in Aries rising, then you've got a lot going on that, that has to do with your sense of self anyway. But you're talking about the fifth house and the 11th house. So romance and what's the future of this romantic connection? Is it something that I should try? Is it something I should break away? What's the value in it, especially as it pertains to tangible values? Is there something tangible here or not? If you are a Taurus rising, then you're talking about the fourth house, 10th house. So home, work, balance, anything that has to do with you know lighting up things at the home, anything that's personal to you, uh, having fun in your own personal space and highlighting a sense of rejuvenated personal satisfaction that is going to balance out with the things you want to do in the world, your sense of uh, social atmosphere. Uh, for Taurus Risings, there's a lot of change happening anyway uh, in your personal sphere, uh, especially as it pertains to your creative endeavors and your work on a more creative level. The moon would be in your 10th house, and that could give you that feeling of um, I really want to do something. It could also mean that like in, you don't necessarily want to be in public too much or around too many people because it could agitate you, it could overstimulate you. So you want to kind of find that fringe area just a bit. If you are a Gemini rising, then um, this is happening between your third and your ninth house. I'm doing this all in my head, so forgive me. Third and your ninth house, so this is highlighting if you wanna do any writing, if you wanna do any expansion, teaching, consulting, create courses, if you wanna do any sort of local travel where you expand out, like for instance, I'm in Los Angeles, a trip to Big Bear um, with the water energy that's in here might be favorable, and I probably wouldn't spend much time on the water with this energy, but I would be around it, so it would be rejuvenating. With the third house highlighting that with the ninth house, ninth house moon, you know, it's that that feeling of my opinions and reevaluating which opinions are good and which ones are not and that I need to reassess. Anything that has to do with culture and how I balance that out with my own personal identity so that I can I can embrace that a bit more, whether it's my own culture or just being more cultured that would be for Gemini's. For Cancer Rising, this is going to be your second house, eighth house. This is going to be shining a light on your sense of self-worth, value, finances. In your eighth house moon there, that transit that's going on is going to highlight that sense of uh, shared resources. So a lot of this has to do with money, your worth versus other, other people's worth, whether or not you can expand out on your money and your financial situation and your personal situation in terms of your values by adopting what other people do and say, you know what, that all has some sort of merit for my own future. How can I pull that in with what I do? If it's a team collective atmosphere, having that team niche down and not be so involved with the rest of people just saying, you know what, this person, this person, this person, let's pull this in. A uh, sense of intimacy versus your own sense of femininity, male or female, doesn't matter. Just getting into your personal Venusian side and saying, you know what, I have, I, I want to be valued for my creative talents, for my womanhood, for, you know, anything that is second house, trying something new in terms of, you know, food and just saying, you know, I've always wanted to try this. It's a good time to try it now. Go back, uh, revisit it for, where am I? Leo Risings, this is happening in your first and seventh house. So the sun being in your first house, highlighting all this mercury, highlighting in a retrograde with your uh, sense of self, purpose, doing, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Is there any purpose to it? And then with the Mars, uh, Mars, <laughs> the moon sitting over in the seventh house saying, who is my friend and are they a good friend? Who are the people that I am dealing with on a daily basis? What's my sense of fashion? 
how can I integrate what I want to do with other people to, you know, affect them on some level to make change there? When I have my like micro dealings with people, there's small interactions, whether it's the grocery store or somewhere else, how can I express myself in a way that betters their day? That would be a good uh, use of this energy over here. Again, the the energy always being in the next sign for Venus, which is important in all of this, being in the second house, it's about raising the sense of self-worth and using your own talents to kind of express that out. Also, how you can use that for your own business, finding value in interactions that are going to be either collective or bring money to you, honestly, uh, through that sense of micro interactions. So not, or, or something social online, right? Because we have that technology that's there. Also, what technology is going to help you move forward and how do you do that so that you can have more time? If you are a, what's the next one? Virgo rising, uh, then this is happening in your 12th, 6th axis. So there's this moon going over your six. I'm going to reverse this one, which is pulling that pressure into saying, what am I doing on a, on a daily basis? What am I doing like my health and my routine and what can I change? How can I be a bit more holistic and bring in the sense of spirituality, bring in uh, vitality by saying, you know what, I'm going to lower the amount of ingredients in what I am consuming so that I can feel better. Some of you guys might do really well as Virgo Risings with like fruit smoothies or some sort of vegetable mix smoothie, something water-based. Uh, that you can bring into your life. When it comes to romance, just saying, am I getting back from the relationship and the service that I put into others, uh, what I'm putting into it, or do I feel like I'm missing a lot of admiration and appreciation? And that balance is saying, you know, I don't need all the appreciation, but I should expect some level of that. And, you know, it's putting Venus into the first house, which is value and relationships over what you do, but all of that's going to be behind the scenes. So you do have to communicate a bit more. If you're feeling like you need to be validated on some level, and look, in some way we all do, then you need to express that and say, this is something that I need for myself. If you are a Libra rising, oh my goodness, I'm turning this wheel so much. If you're a Libra rising, this is happening between your fifth and your uh, 11th house axis, which is opposite from the Aries one. So we're reversing these energies as all Libra risings do with everything. And we're saying that the sun going through our 11th house is really highlighting our aspirations moving forward in terms of like our goals, what changes we want to make, how we're going to set up our future. All of that has to do with the value that we're going to be you know, pushing in. And a lot of Libra risings are like, how can I scale down? How can I change things? How can I bring up things from the past or people from the past or groups or teams or technologies so that I can actually make more money since, you know, its ruler is sitting is sitting in the, the second house there and that square is there. So it's a lot about value and talent. So you can't have the expectation that you're going to just make money. You have to align with money and say, how can my, how can my creative expression and how I'm unique in that way lead into something that's going to bring me money and how can I utilize other people's assets or pulling different things together. So if it's, I'm going to take the easy road on this example and just say you're an artist, how can I merge other things together instead of feeling like I have to create from inspiration from nothing all the time? How can I take something someone else has made and either utilize that into some sort of am amalgamated thing or just say, that's really cool. But if I took this part out of it and this part and I created my own thing, I have my own thing and then I could sell it or I could present it or I could do whatever with it. So that's the energy for that. In terms of relationships, you want to you want to address any sort of lack of romance that is happening and bring in a little bit of spontaneity because that may be missing there, which is making it feel like the relationship might not be valuable. If you are a, what's next, Scorpio rising, then we have ah, 10th, 4th, right? Yes, we have the 10th, 4th axis. Again, apologize, I'm doing this in my head. If you are Scorpio rising, then the moon is sitting in the fourth house. The sun is sitting in the 10th house. So you're already a, a deep, introspective person, likely anyway. So the the moon and Pluto being together, your, your chart ruler 
Um, actually, it doesn't really matter for transits because it doesn't work that way. But the energy that you're familiar with as your chart ruler is currently transiting your fourth house, technically going back into your third house. Um, but we'll be in your fourth house for the next like 17 years or whatever. But this full moon sitting there with the moon in your fourth house and the sun in your 10th house is going to highlight the need for allowing yourself to really get personal, to dive a little bit deeper into the things that on a very personal level make you very unique. Any sort of personal friends, personal groups or anything, any people that you have around you that can lead you into public image and reputation. This is, and that's twofold. One is be very cautious of who you allow around you and who knows too much about you who might be damaging your reputation, who might be saying things, who might be not bringing value to you behind the scenes. You have to restructure your friends group as it pertains to who's actually personal to you and then who you need to keep a distance with and set boundaries with. And that's going to be in opposition to all the restructuring, re-strategizing of all your long-term goals that have to do with any sort of recreation or finding purpose in your work, in your what you want to present to the world. And as a you know, Pluto ruled planet, you're already selective of what you put out there anyway, but we want to bring some vitality, we want to bring some drama. This is a good moment. I hear main character energy all the time. It's actually a really good moment for you to start stepping out and letting people see a side of you that they wouldn't normally see. Because you're with that opposition, you want to find balance. You don't want to give them the everything. And as a Scorpio, I don't think we have to worry about that. However, with the moon in the fourth house in that opposition, it's like a little bit of that personal needs to kind of come out in the expression. Let some people know, just make sure they're the right people. Sagittarius rising is going to have the third ninth house axis. So we are going to have, oh my goodness, um, the third house will be the moon. So the moon will be over your third house and the sun will be over your ninth house. A lot of bringing highlights to culture, which is doubling down on your Sagittarian energy, actually, and travel and being cultured and expanding things out. Anything that has to do with like schooling and um with the moon in opposition during the cycle, it's like, am I focusing in on the things that I really should be learning or am I getting lost in the idea of learning all kinds of things? And this is fun, but I'm starting to think that all of this learning isn't really leading anywhere because we have that sun conjunct Mercury retrograde in Vesta. And it's like, it's like, I want to commit to this, but I don't know that this is, and it's it's like, is college even worth it? Or is higher education, is this program that I got into, do I really want to do this? Or is it just that I've kind of looked at it as a big umbrella instead of saying, you know what, I don't need all of this, 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 and this. You can get rid of all that. I just need this and this, and I can use that. And the ideas that I have and my sense of identity and the things that I want to do and how I want to expand myself... I can use the retrograde energies that are all involved and all the ones that aren't technically directly involved and say, let's re-strategize what I'm actually trying to do here. If you have a coaching business and you're doing anything where you're teaching, dial it back, scale it back down and say, you know what, I'm trying too hard to teach too many things when in reality, I know my niche audience, they like this, this, and this. If I focus on this, 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 and just expand on that, I'll actually develop a stronger base and be able to move that forward. If I'm thinking about relationships, then it's more about being cautious about what you're saying and the communication itself and being there for the ride, but also being aware that the journey with this relationship needs to have some sort of purpose, some sort of long-term value. And we wanna make sure that we're not just putting our energy into somebody for the sake of having fun, I want something out of this and I need to see if that person also wants something out of this. And that doesn't mean let's get married now, let's make it official now, but you know, we want to, we want to use this energy to say, let's steer this in a direction that at least lets me know if this is worth my time. Because if it's not, and it's not real, if I don't want something real, that's great. But if I do want something real, then I need to know that now. Capricorn rising is going to be the second eighth house uh, axis there. So we have the moon in your second house is going to bring a lot of highlights to your sense of self-worth and value, especially as it pertains to any sort of integration with other people, any sort of debt and finance and rethinking your and strategizing your debt situation. Uh, anything that's deep down levels of intimacy and whether or not there's value within relationships in intimacy and being able to talk about these things and feel like you can be yourself instead of feeling like you have to be something you're not for other people because there's the idea in romance it's like how deep do I want this to go how how real do I want this to go 
And the average Capricorn, and not everybody's the same, but being Saturn ruled and obviously retrograde direct matters, all the aspects matter, but it's Saturn. So it does have to do with authority. It does have to do with goals. It does have to do with structure. If your natal Saturn is retrograde, you have to build that structure and find that. It's also like Mars retrograde too, because it's your chart ruler. And it's all about finding yourself by going deep inward. And this is a great time to really calibrate that when it comes to finance, when it comes to what you're utilizing and being more cautious and aware of how your money is going out, how your value is going out and how you see yourself and say, you know what, maybe I've been a little bit too critical of myself and my brain. It's ironic I'm saying this because my brother is a Capricorn rising. This is exactly what he's going through and not thinking that everything has to be completely logical when sometimes things are not in your control. That eighth house is shining a light and Mercury retrograde there saying some things are just not in your control and you have to start thinking what is in my control so that you can balance that out with your own sense of value, your own sense of purpose, and your own sense of making a change in your financial situation, dealing with the fluctuations in both self-worth and material worth, and being able to utilize that by addressing the strategy that you're going to create and your sense of identity that surrounds all of this by setting your own goals and those goals being realistic instead of these outlandish utopian goals that are unachievable. If you are an Aquarius rising, then the moon is going through your first house, which is addressing your sense of self, uh, motivation, the things that you're doing. And there could be an element of feeling lethargic during this time, feeling like you aren't sure that you can do your own things for your own way. Um, and the sun over in the seventh house is a lot of potential that you put a lot of your energy into your partner, into other people. Remember that a full moon is all about balance and finding a way to strategize how you can integrate both of those, the expressive side and the emotional security side. So we don't want to feel emotionally insecure about ourselves or physical body. However, you do want to balance it out with the sun and Mercury retrograde. So it's like, how can I you know, make sure that any communications with other people are feeding into my emotional security. And I can have fun with those conversations. I don't have to express myself in a way that it comes across as insecure. When it comes to fitness and romance, how can I do that with a partner and kind of go back onto, you know, different ideas on how to make that more fun, more spontaneous, so that I can feel like I'm doing what I want to do. I'm including somebody else and there's no feeling of separation or exclusion. If it comes to business or work, a lot of that is going to, so we have, we have Venus and Virgo and that would be in your eighth house. So we have a lot of that energy that's going to go into the value of intimacy, going to go into how you can actually dive deeper into your partnership. But again, it's not so that you can have value in servicing the other person all the time, meaning you have to pay attention to your own body, your own sense of value when it comes to intimacy. And that means you need certain things and those things might be quirky or different or whatever and you might not feel so emotionally secure in those, but that's a conversation that needs to be had so that you can develop deeper bonds and including the other person being creatively expressive. Now, com now, removing this and taking a completely different approach to the same energies, when it comes to your creative expression, it's like, hey, let's dive deeper into our darker, intimate, taboo sides of our creative expression when it comes to design, when it comes to um, the way that we express ourselves out in the world. Maybe during this time, we wanna be like kind of business casual, but darker. And we want to express ourselves a bit more so that we stand out, so that we don't feel like we're subsuming ourselves into society. We want to be different anyway as an Aquarius rising, and uh, all of that value uh, is extremely important, and it is tying into the fourth house of our, you know, making changes on what is emotionally comfortable for us and starting to step out of that box, not in a way that makes us feel completely uncomfortable, but a way that makes us feel like, hey, on the very personal level, I can express who I am without overcompensating and trying too hard. And then finally, we have Pisces. If you are a Pisces rising, then the moon is in your 12th house and the sun will be in your 6th house. This is a lot of uh, reevaluating your I mean, look, you have, you have Saturn in retrograde in your first house transiting. You have Neptune uh, transiting, and that's a familiar energy for you. These are all retrograde energies that are happening anyway. So a sense of structure, restructuring, that does not make you feel like you have to stick to anything, but but you have these like short long-term goals. You have these these things that you're setting for yourself that can change and you're being okay with that. And you're bringing a sense of structured 
spirituality into your life and acceptance and forgiveness of yourself. You're being a bit more kind about your physical body instead of being too lazy about what you're doing. And that could be the challenge, right? There's pros and cons for all energies. So stepping up your game a little bit to say, I want to align a bit more with my spiritual path and with the moon going through your 12th house, it is highlighting a change that could be happening in terms of your identity, your spiritual identity, and the value you place on spirituality as it pertains to how you can apply that to the real world instead of living in the spiritual world you know, spiritual space all the time, because it's great to have that spiritual connection. It's one of the four main pillars, along with physical, mental, and emotional. And being able to balance that out and say, yes, spirituality, creativity, unique creativity, unique spirituality, my own perspective, how I stand out, how I do spirituality within the collective, within the group, how I see all of that. How can I take that and be expressive in the real world? How can I make a job out of it? How could I, or a side hustle, how can I reevaluate my, reevaluate how I express this in the real world to other people so that they can see this and they can use this and it becomes more practical and efficient for you as opposed to being lost in wanderland and applying all of that energy into the seventh house where Venus is going to be sit in, sitting in Virgo for you in a transit and saying, how do I add this level of compassion and um, realistic efficiency and doing things for others and feeling like I want to do those things because not just a level of devotion that's sitting there, but rethinking what I'm asking for in return, especially in terms of validation. So you always need to be validated for those practical, efficient things that you're doing on that you know, Virgo-esque energy. But as it pertains to how it's leading into the seventh house, it's about reciprocation for Virgo sitting there. So what are they doing for you? How are they... When I say servicing you, that sounds really dirty, but you know we could go that way with it too. Um, but you know Venus and partnership and how that is all allowing you to express yourself outwardly. Some of you guys might actually say, you know what? In order for this to be the way I want it to be, I might have been working and work is good and there's nothing really wrong with work, but I feel like I would be better suited working for myself or being able to you know, start my own business. There could be some opportunities, especially for partnership during this time or just relatability. Either you're directly partnering with somebody or you're getting information on how to set things up or how to detail things or structure things uh, so that you can kind of just enjoy your day to day and uh, enjoy your life because that's a lot of what's going on with that Mercury retrograde sitting in your sixth house. It's like your day-to-day -day might feel stagnant and with the sun there, it's really highlighting this area. But we we want to rethink and bring things from the past even, you know, that we used to do on a daily basis. We used to have fun, you know, as recreation. Sometimes it's something as simple as like adding yoga in or adding like a five-minute exercise. But Leo rules fitness. It rules recreation. It rules, you know, getting your body going and having that that vitality. And it's over your sixth house of mental health, which feeds into physical health. So we need to have that youthful mind moving forward. Make sure that the people you're surrounding yourself, that you're interacting with, are not making you feel old <laughs> during this time. You want to have that youthful rejuvenance. Rejuvenance? Sure. And, uh, and interact with people in a valuable way and associate yourself with people of value to be able to kind of move yourself forward. The only other thing I really want to say uh, to conclude this full moon video uh, that I didn't mention before, I've been, I've been using it in, in, the, in the horoscopes, but the, the fact that the T-square is happening technically is a grand cross with Pallas. But the T-square is happening between the full moon and that Uranus placement sitting there at 27 degrees. That's super important. So you have 27, 27, and 27. Now, Uranus is not moving fully direct forward. It is moving forward, but it's in pre-grade, so it is slowing down. So when it comes to, first off, it's the ruler of the moon in this case, and it's the ruler of Pluto in retrograde. So these deep energies that are happening, this is all intense. It's all obsessive energy. And it's all going into value and all that's going into Virgo. So it's very easy in this time to be very critical of other people, be very critical of yourself, be very critical of your money, be very critical of whether or not you can do something in terms of skills and talents. And for women, being very critical of your femininity, you want to balance this out in a positive way that supports the entire thing. So remember, the order matters. The moon is leading into Uranus. So Uranus actually takes over as it's not only its ruler, 
the the moon situated ruler, but also in this situation in general. Uranus has to be factored in as what we're aligning with. We are aligning with our future. We're aligning with the value of our future, the future of our money, the future of femininity, the changes we need to make to feel more feminine, the changes we need to make to have more abundance. However, in order to bring that in, we have to factor in the Mercury retrograde, the re-strategization, which is also uh, another thing, the creative problem solving by researching and diving deeper with the opposition from Pallas to Uranus. But with all that Leo energy, what are we devoting ourselves to? What can we devote ourselves to? We don't want to set up a situation where we would never want to do this in the first place. There has to be a desire to do it. There has to be a, uh, a sense of personal creative expression, and there has to be the feeling that I want to utilize um, restructuring all of this with uh, my talents, my critical real world talents to pull all that together, to do something I enjoy, to find purpose, to find vitality. And then I balance that back out with the changes that I'm going to make, the future I'm going to do. That's how you resolve that T-square. So best of luck to everybody during this full moon cycle. Remember, it's a halfway point in a lunar cycle. Use this. By the way, it's not a culminating point. The culminating point is just be just before the new moon. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your time. Find purpose in what you're doing. Don't overcompensate. Don't let your insecurities take over. Be grounded, realistic, and practical as you move forward with all of this energy and vibe higher. <laughs>